All right. Um, well, I wanted to make this little dim, uh, this little video for you, um, so that probably we could help with uh, the debugging process, since you may be uh, may not know what you need to know to be able to take and debug your programs effectively. Well, hopefully this will help. Uh, we're running your code here, and uh, as you can see, yep, it's running, but when I press my trigger here, which I'm using the keyboard to do so, nothing happens. So, um, in order for this to work, we really need to go into Stella's debugger. To get into Stella's debugger, uh, I use the uh, backwards apostrophe tilde key that should be to the left of your one on, one on most keyboards. And that will bring up the Stella debugger. Now, let's take a little tour around this thing. Um, this is perhaps the most comprehensive debugger I've ever seen inside of an emulator ever, and this pretty much includes uh, MAME's uh, built-in debugger that they've been working on now for the last decade. So, with that said, we have over here in the top left corner, we have your display. Uh, which can be broken down into individual pieces if you take and select the window immediately underneath it so you can see pixel by pixel, uh, which can help, especially in debugging things like vertical delay problems and the like. We have to the right of that, we have a frame counter, which tells us the current frame that's currently being drawn, uh, the current scan line of that frame, the uh, current frame cycle, uh, the current scan line cycle uh, and this uh, is the famous 76 cycles across every single time bang 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 uh, counting from 1 to 76 each time going through going through as each instruction is pushed uh, this is the relative pixel uh, position uh, which ranges from a negative uh, value which indicates we're on the uh, left side of the uh, visible display during the horizontal blank to positive values uh, which can go all the way up to 160 or so. Uh, this stands in stark contrast to the color clock value which is the raw pixel position which can be anywhere from 0 to 228 because we have 228 possible color clocks across the screen. This corresponds to 76 cycles here by dividing 228 divided by 3 because the processor is running at one third of the NTSC color burst signal rate. We also have a number of flags here uh, to indicate that we are either in the vertical blank period and to indicate when the vertical sync or the ultra black signal is actually on. Moving over to the right again, we have uh, the processor general state, primarily the program counter, showing us where we currently are sitting. Uh, well, now that the processor has been halted, we see the current stack pointer, which is sitting three bytes away from the end of stack. Uh, we have the, uh, the three registers, A, X, and Y, and their decimal counterparts, as well as their binary counterparts for each one of these. Also, you'll note here, these are really of really special significance because if you have loaded in your uh, project along with your list file, along with your symbol file, etc., uh, these will correspond either to memory locations, to immediate locations, meaning they were directly fed uh, from, uh, from their operands, or to uh, the symbolic names of their locations, which correspond to uh, your variables and things that you define in your listing. This is extremely important in this case. Um, we have a number of uh, we have a number of buttons, and well, actually, these are more flags than anything else that you can use to zero out volume values that you select, uh, invert them, uh, increment them, decrement them, uh, negate them, and shift them left, shift them right. Um, we also have. Uh, down here at the bottom, these are your processor flags and you really need to, if you're going to be doing 6502 assembly code, you're really going to have to understand these extremely well. These correspond to an 8-bit value, uh, bits 0 through 7, of which the 5th bit is not used, uh, but these correspond to the carry flag, the 0 flag, uh, the interrupt flag, the uh, BCD or decimal flag, 
the B, the brake flag, which indicates if a brake has been triggered, uh, not used, and finally the overflow flag and the negative flag. These are bits six and seven, which can be easily, uh, very easily tested using uh, the uh, bit command. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, depending on the values, sometimes you can test for uh, these first two bits as well. So, moving down a bit, we also now have a complete dump of your entire memory of a standard 2600 uh, VCS, which uh, gives us the 128 bytes that are provided by the RAM on the RAM IO timer chip, 6532. Uh, you'll notice that the bot that uh, in your program here you're using the bits and pieces mostly uh, for the variables that you've defined at the top and if we actually select them you can start to see uh, down here you'll see the individual la la labels for each one of them so you can see what these correspond to and you can also take and change these values uh, if you want to and of course if you don't if you made a mistake you can undo or revert the change back to what they were. Uh, you also have decimal and uh, binary complement, uh, binary representations just like you do for the registers up here. You can also search for particular values such as a variable name or a plus one whatever particular expression and now this brings us down here to uh, the lower lip part portion of the screen which we currently have the monitor the uh, monitor command line which you can use to send commands you can uh, you can send commands to take and trigger certain that certain things or you can go to the various registers displays uh, such as the TIA which shows you the contents of the registers of each, of each piece of the TIA such as the color registers uh, the collision uh, detection registers uh, and the various strobes which are hit at different times, WSYNC, RSYNC, uh, the player resets, the missile resets, the ball reset, H move, and finally the clear registers down below. Uh, you can see here, uh, on a given scan line, as these things are being set, the eight bits that make up the player zero register, its relative position in pixels on screen, uh, and the current H move value that it currently has, whether or not it's been set to reflect or whether or not it's been set to delay. Uh, you also see a quick representation of the new size uh, uh, player zero registers, which tells you how many copies are actually present on for a given uh, for a given player for at this particular moment. You see the same thing for player one. Uh, in addition, you also see three identical sets of uh, values for the missile zero, missile one, and the ball registers for enabling them, their position on the screen, their current H move values, their current sizes, and their current reset strobes. You also see a uh, value for delay instead of reset for the ball because that's what you need for th that you actually, the ball has a delay. In addition, you also see the 20 bits of play field uh, laid out, uh, colored with the current background and whether or not they're enabled or disabled, you can of course toggle bits on and off if you wish. Same thing up here if you want to do that over and over again. And whether or not the playfield has been set to reflect, whether it's in score mode, or whether the playfield has priority over the sprites or vice versa. Um, this is a particularly unusual flag uh, that you can use to um, fry the machine. Uh, and uh, do all sorts of very weird things to emulate uh, certain peculiarities of real hardware. It doesn't have much use except uh, primarily, I believe, is mostly a curiosity. If you, anybody who's else who's watching this, please feel free to correct me if, if I'm wrong. Um, furthermore, we have I/O for much of the same things. Uh, we have uh, SWCHA, which contains uh, the status of our uh, our joystick switches, the right registers, which are currently uh, data direction registers right now. They're all basically set to input. Uh, the CNTs, which yeah, okay, uh, and finally the read registers, which contain uh, the status of all of the pins for that. In this case. Uh, joystick, so zero would indicate a push in that given direction. 
if you took and flipped those things on appropriately. Um, in addition, same thing for SWCHB, which uh, provides the uh, data direction registers for the switches on the front panel, as well as the status of those switches on the front panel. You also have the current values for priming of the different timer registers, which you can set just like anywhere else, as well as the uh, inputs all the way up to input 5, as well as whether or not the inputs are latched uh, or whether the inputs are actually dumped to ground, for example, for use for with uh, reading paddles. So uh, you also get in time for the current timer values, uh, ti uh, timer intervals for anything that's gone past the, ti the end time values, total clocks, end time clocks, etc. All of this is really useful for basically figuring out your mostly your timer values and checking your joystick to make sure it's working correctly and reading the values from uh, your input ports for dumping checking your uh, uh, for checking your paddles in addition uh, the different difficulty switches and the TV types are also decoded down here so that you can see them and, and uh, you can also take and set uh, and reset things like select and reset while you're tracing through code so you can test uh, critical sections of code. Um, you know, when loading a ROM, you, of course, you want to randomize the zero page and extended RAM to simulate uh, what would happen on real hardware because real hardware comes up in an indeterminate state. And uh, you can also do the same thing for randomizing the CPU if you really want to. Uh, these can provide rather interesting effects uh, when you're doing this in, in runtime mode, uh, you know, having the effect of frying the machine and such. This brings us all the way over here to a disassembly view on the right hand side, which gives us a view of um, which bank we're in if we're dealing with multiple, with, uh, with cartridges with more than one bank of memory, uh, the dump of the code in that particular bank, as well as data. It tries to, Stella tries extremely hard to uh, given lists and symbol tables outputs from your assembler to figure out which pieces are code and which pieces are data. It pretty much fi it pretty much makes the assumption that if a piece of code is never uh, jumped to or never referenced, uh, uh, if something is never referenced other than indirectly, uh, uh, like say from a load instruction, whatever, then that must be data and to not treat it as code and vice versa. So. Um, with that said, you can scroll down through the code, all the way through the address space, all the way down to the bottom, where we contain where we have our uh, where we have our uh, reset vectors. Back up again, and you'll notice that there's a strip over here on the left-hand side. This allows you to place a breakpoint in the code, so you can stop the debugger at any point during the process of running the game. Now, this is extremely useful because if you're looking to see whether or not something has actually happened, you can place a breakpoint right on top of something that you know should happen when uh, at a given a set of conditions. And if it doesn't happen, that means that you need to take and adjust your breakpoints to find why a particular piece of code isn't being fired, etc., etc. And usually in the case of 6502 code, you can look for the nearest branch instruction uh, for a little further up the code to find your nearest culprit. So, um, with that said, we've kind of done a, qu a quick tour, uh, well, as quick as I could, around the debugger so that you can actually get to work. So given this, if we leave the debugger by hitting like hitting the tilde like we did before, we go back to where we were and we notice that yeah, right now the whole display is basically black. Let's go ahead and reset the display. Let's go ahead and reset the system. <laughs> 